Okay, now let's talk a little bit about essential fatty acids because this is also some of the functions that we know we need fatty acids for. Um, and this is a little story called, Whatever Happened to Vitamin F? So we're gonna start off back in 1927. There were two researchers named Evans and Burr and they were doing some research with mice. And what they found is that if they had mice that who were deficient in fat, they were not feeding them any fat, but they did feed them the fat soluble vitamins, they found that these mice were still very sick. And uh, for example, they, these mice had really scaly skin, especially on their tails. They would have tail necrosis, so kind of the ends of their tail would die off. They had very poor growth and they had a really early mortality. And so at first the, the researchers said, aha, it must be vitamin F. But then what they found is they could actually reverse all of these symptoms when they fed specific types of fat. And so they found when they fed these mice linoleic acid, which is one of our omega-6 fats, they found that they could reverse these symptoms. Um, and so this is when they coined essential fatty acids. The reason that these are fatty acids and not a vitamin is because we know that vitamins, we need them in much smaller amounts, whereas fatty acids, we need a larger quantity. That's what makes it a macronutrient. So this was when we first coined the idea of essential fatty acids. Vitamin F does not exist. Um, so that, that was in mice. What about in humans? So back around 1958, they were starting to find that infants who were fed formula that did not have have any of these essential fatty acids in them also had really poor growth, but that they could reverse these symptoms if they fed linoleic acid. And so over time, they found that there are in fact two different essential fatty acids, linoleic acid, which is a omega-6 acid, as well as lin alpha linolenic acid, which is an omega-3 fatty acid. Now, why is it that it's these specific fatty acids that are essential and not others? Well, it turns out we do have the enzymes to synthesize fatty acids in our body. Um, however, we uh, mammals only have enzymes that can insert double bonds at position omega-9 or higher. And so these fatty acids have double bonds at omega-6 and omega-3. So we, since we don't have enzymes that can insert double bonds at that end, closer to the methyl end of the fatty acid tail, then we have to get those from our diet. And so that's what makes these fatty acids essential. So these two fat, essential fatty acids, linoleic acid, which is an omega-6, and alpha linoleic acid, which is an omega-3, we end up using those fatty acids to in turn make a few other types of um, fatty acids within our body, but these are the two that are essential. Um, so these two essential fatty acids that I have now introduced you to, linoleic acid, which is an omega-6, and alpha linolenic acid, which is an omega-3, they are precursors to some other really important fatty acids in our body. So first let's look at the linoleic acid, an omega-6 fatty acid. Through um, reactions that are using some other enzymes we do have, like elongases and desaturases. So an elongase is going to elongate the fatty acid, add some more carbons to it. Desaturases are going to desaturate or take, um, are going to essentially add some more double bonds into our chain. So through some reactions with various elongases and desaturases, we can make arachidonic acid from this linoleic acid. So arachidonic acid has four double bonds in it, um, and the first double bond is gonna be at that omega-6 position, and it is 20 carbons long. So why do we care about arachidonic acid? So arachidonic acid, it can be in a very important component of cell membranes. Additionally, arachidonic acid can be acted on by other types of enzymes, like cyclooxygenases and lipoxygenases, to make uh, a whole family of compounds called eicosanoids. Um, and eicosanoids can play some very important roles in, in signaling. Um, they're kind of like local hormones, um, so they can be very important for things things like inflammation um, and for, uh, for vasodilation, vasoconstriction. Now frequently arachidonic acid is going to be a precursor, precursor for a lot of our pro-inflammatory eicosanates. So for example, thromboxin A2 is um, synthesized from arachidonic acid. So that is one of the reasons that linoleic acid is essential is because it is the precursor that we use to make arachidonic acid. Now let's look at our other essential fatty acid, alpha linolenic acid, which is an omega-3 fatty acid. So same thing, we take this alpha linolenic acid, it can undergo some chemical reactions with various elongases and desaturases in order to produce two other very important fatty acids for us. Icosapentaenoic acid, which is uh, 20 carbons long, it has five double bonds, the first double bond is at an omega-3 spot. 
so that uh, frequently we abbreviate that as EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, and then the other is docosahexaenoic acid, um, which we abbreviate as DHA, which is 22 carbons long. It has six double bonds, and uh, it's also it's an omega-3. And so here I'm showing you a picture of DHA. Now, both EPA and DHA are absolutely critical fatty acids in cell membranes, especially in neural tissue. So that's why I put a little picture of a brain here. Um, and so they are very, if, especially if you look at this picture of DHA, it's a very wild and crazy shape. And so it doesn't pack very closely together when it's inside, when it's part of a phospholipid in a membrane. And so that makes these membranes very fluid, which is especially important in neural tissue where we have a very dynamic membrane that's frequently sending um, uh, uh, signals across synapses. So we need very fluid membranes in the brain. So EPA and DHA are especially important fatty acids in the cell membranes in neural tissue. Additionally, they can also be acted on, EPA can also be acted on by these cyclo uh, cyclooxygenases and lipoxygenases to, um, per to uh, form other types of eicosanoids. And these are primarily anti-inflammatory eicosanoids. Icosinoids. So, for an example, prostaglandin E3, anti inflammatory vasodilation. So, together, what we know now is that these essential fatty acids are precursors for some other very important fatty acids um, in our body that are both important for cell membranes as well as signaling molecules um, within the eicosanoid family. And so, we can, of course, uh, directly eat arachidonic acid, um, EPA, and DHA. We can eat those directly from our diet. So, we'll get this a lot of arachidonic acid from plant oils, and then EPA and DHA, we can get those from, um, from fatty fish and also from um, compounds like algae.